Standard form is one way that we can write a quadratic function. Vertex form is another. We can see that in each of those functions, they have an independent variable x and a dependent variable y. They also each have a variable a, and a does the same thing in each case. It controls the direction of opening. It also tells us how wide or narrow that parabola is. In this lesson, we're going to investigate the vertex form of a quadratic function, beginning with what these variables h and k control. Each of these functions are quadratic functions. If we were to FOIL this out, we can see that they would have a degree of 2. Each is written in vertex form, and we can see that the a value is going to be 1. So remember, a is the value in front of that bracket squared, and we can see it is a value of 1 because it's not written there. It is a value of 1. Remember, a cannot equal 0. That gets rid of the entire squared term. We then have this x minus h squared term. So we can see that here we have x minus 2. So so that 2 is the value of h, and then k is the value that we add or subtract after that squared term bracket. So because we're not adding or subtracting anything, I can see that I have a k value of 0. Now this one over here, remember this original form is x minus h. So another way that we can write the second one out is if you think minus a negative, when you multiply those signs together, they become a positive. So this h value here is actually a negative 2, so it's always the opposite sign of what you think it will be in the bracket. So just remember here, this is a positive 2 value for h. Here when we see that plus sign, it is a negative 2 value for h. And then again, we're not adding or subtracting anything, so that k value is going to be 0. We just don't write down that plus 0. All right, now we could make a table of values, substitute some values in for x, and see what the corresponding y values are. Or we can go ahead and graph this on our calculator. So when we put this in, remember it's going to be bracket x and then minus right here and then 2, close the bracket and we're going to press the squared button. And my window is just the default settings, so negative 10 to positive 10 on both the x and y axis with a scale of 1. And then we can use our calculator as we did in the previous lesson to get some key points such as the y-intercept and the vertex. This is going to be my minimum. And because this particular form of a quadratic is called vertex form, we're going to pay particular attention to that vertex, which in this case is at 2, 0. Let's now go ahead and take a look at what this graph looks like. So we're going to go into y equals, and I'm just going to change what was that minus sign to a plus sign. My window is still the same. And then we're going to use that calculator to get some of those key points. And again, because this is the vertex form, let's pay attention to where that minimum is. We can see that the vertex is at negative 2, 0. Well, that's interesting. It looks as though the h value is the x-coordinate of the vertex, and the k value is the y-coordinate of the vertex. So we have have the h value as the x-coordinate of the vertex, the k value as the y-coordinate of the vertex. Let's take a look at a couple more and see if this holds true. All right, I can see in my next one, so again I have an a value of 1, that's the value right in front of that x squared, and you can see that h is always in the brackets. So because we have no brackets in either of these, that tells me that the h value is going to be 0. k is the value we are adding or subtracting to that squared term. So I can see that I have a positive 3 here for k, and then in this case we have a minus 3 or a negative 3 in the case of k. We can see with this graph that the axis of symmetry is the y-axis, x equals 0, and we can also see that we have the vertex as our y-intercept. So in this particular case, we can use the calculator to get those key values. We have a vertex at 0, 3, and then with our last one here, make sure you put in x squared minus 3. So the minus is the operation key on the right-hand side, and then we can graph that, and again, use your calculator to get some of those key points. We can see that the x-intercepts are not going to be whole numbers, so I've estimated where those are. Are, and our y-intercept is our vertex, that's our minimum, and we can see that that vertex is going to occur at 0, negative 3. And we can see that the pattern does continue. So the h happens to be the x-coordinate of the vertex, the k-value happens to be the y-coordinate of the vertex. So you can remember here that the vertex form of a quadratic will give us the coordinates of the vertex. A is the same as it is in standard form. So A controls direction of opening as well as the how wide or narrow that parabola is. If we see in brackets h plus k, remember that's the same as x minus a negative. So if we see in brackets x plus h, that parabola has shifted to the left. 
if we see in brackets x minus h, that parabola has shifted to the right. So anything in brackets behaves kind of the opposite of what you think it's going to. So just remember, if we see a minus, that means h is really positive, we're moving to the right. If we see that x plus h, remember that's the same as minus a negative, so we're moving to the left, and then h is the number of units that we're moving that graph left or right. K, K is outside of the bracket, so it does what you think it will. So if K is positive, K is greater than zero, our parabola is shifting up. So this is the vertical translation. It's moving the graph up or down. If K is less than zero, if K is negative, we're shifting that parabola down K number of units. So when you see a quadratic function written in vertex form, you could graph it on your calculator and then use your calculator to get some of those pieces of information you have to get, but it's so much easier if you recognize this is the x-coordinate of the vertex and it's going to be a positive 3, this is the y-coordinate of the vertex, and remember because it's an ordered pair, we want to put it in brackets. We also know that the vertex lies on the axis of symmetry. It runs through that point. Because the axis of symmetry is a vertical line, we're going to write the equation of that line with x equals, and you can see that we are crossing the x-axis at the same point that is the x-coordinate of that vertex. So that number is the same thing that goes here. I also can tell from that function, because a happens to be a negative value, that my parabola will open down. I know if it opens down, I'm going to have a maximum value, and the maximum value comes from that y coordinate of the vertex. And notice because it says value, we do actually need to give the value of that. Domain, and again remember that your calculator is only graphing what we have set as the window, but that parabola is going to keep going. So we can see that it's going to eventually cover all values of x going to negative infinity, all values of x going to positive infinity. So we'll just say that the domain a set of x values where x is an element of the real numbers. Range, we know that the highest point on this parabola is going to be that y coordinate of the vertex, so that 1.8. So we know that because we're opening down, our range is going to be all values of y less than or equal to 1.8 where y is an element of the real number system. So really quickly, I didn't even need to use my calculator to get that graph. I can get all of this information from that function alone. So vertex form is really handy to pull key pieces of information. In grade 10, you were given a polynomial, such as this one here on the left or this one here on the right, and asked to simplify. As soon as we throw a y equals on there, we now have a function, and we happen to have a function in vertex form. We can convert this from vertex form form into standard form, which would then give us additional pieces of information. All right, so beginning the same way we did in grade 10, we're going to FOIL this binomial. So if it helps you, you can write out this is x minus 3 times x minus 3. We're going to just bring down this negative 0.2, and we're going to multiply. So first terms, outside terms inside terms, last terms. Watch the sign there. So a negative times a negative becomes a positive. And then we're going to distribute in that negative 0.2. So we're going to multiply that into the bracket. And then once we multiply that into the bracket, we're going to combine our like terms. So you can see that we have a negative 1.8 and a positive 1.8. Those are the constant terms. This is an x squared. There's no other x squareds. This is an x. There's no other x. So we're going to just leave it as negative 0.2 2x squared plus 1.2x, and then when we add negative 1.8 plus 1.8, those are going to cancel out. We're going to do something very similar on the right here. So again, we're going to begin by foiling this out. If you want to write it out like we did over here, go for it. Or if you remember the shortcut that we talked about previously, we're going to square the first term because it's going to be that times that. So we're squaring that first term to get x squared. We're going to double the product because the product of the outside times the product of the inside will always be the same if we have a binomial squared. So if I multiply those together, negative 2 times x is negative 2x times 2 gives us that negative 4x and then square the last term. So we're going to have here negative 2 times negative 2 will give us positive 4. We're then going to distribute in that coefficient of 3. So we're going to multiply that into every term. And then once we do that, we're going to combine any like terms we have, which in this case is going to be 12 plus 5. Those are the constant terms. So now we have the quadratic, same parabola, in standard form. Remember, a is not changing. So in each of these cases, my a value remains the same. a is the same. Standard form also gives me the y-intercept. So I can see that I have plus 0. So 0 is my y-intercept on that parabola. 17 is my y-intercept on that one. 
Anytime you're given a problem involving functions, you always want to try to draw a sketch and lay out as much information as you have. So in this particular case, we can see that we have a parabola that's going to pass through a point that's given to us. We're also told the axis of symmetry and we're given the range of that parabola. So let's go ahead and plot what we know. So we know the axis of symmetry is going to cross the x-axis at negative 2. We're also told that we are going to pass through this point. So just approximately, I went over three and then I just estimated this is not really drawn to scale because 20 would actually be higher up. And then we also know that we have a range where y is greater than or equal to 30. So I know that if I'm passing through this point and I have to have all y values greater than negative 30, this is going to be my minimum and my parabola is going to be opening up. I also know that the vertex lies on that axis of symmetry. So not only do we know the y coordinate of the vertex, we also know the x coordinate of the vertex. Okay, so let's Let's start, because we ultimately have to get our function in vertex form, let's just write out the vertex form. And then because we know the coordinates of the vertex, we can substitute that in there. So I know that this is my x coordinate of the vertex. So minus a negative 2 is going to become a plus 2. And then k is just that negative 30. So we can substitute that in there. We know every function has an x and a y in it. However, we need to get the specific value for a. So because we're told that it does pass through this point 320, I can take that point knowing that it lies on this particular parabola, substitute in the x coordinate for the x value here, the y coordinate for the y value here, and then that will leave us with one variable a which we'll be able to solve. So let's go ahead and substitute that in. So I know this is my x value going in for the place of x, this is my y value going in for the place of y, and now we have an algebraic equation that we can solve. We can simplify the bracket, but let's begin by adding 30 to both sides. So we're going to add 30 and then at the same time we're going to combine 3 plus 2 to get 5. 5 squared is 25 so we have 25a. I can divide out that coefficient of 25 so I know that 25 divided by 25 will just leave me with that 1a. 50 divided by 25 is 2. And then just remember you have to put this back into the function so my a value is 2 and then we still have that plus 2 squared and minus 30. So this is my quadratic function in vertex form. You can and always then grab your calculator, try to graph this, and check. Do you have a point at 320? Do you have the minimum negative 2, negative 30, and we can see because A is positive that we are going to be opening up. And then our final question here is very similar to one we did in our previous lesson, but now we're given a function in vertex form, and we begin the same way. So we want to see what does the x-axis represent, and we're going to label that with the appropriate units. What does the y-axis represent, and we're going to label that with the appropriate units. We know the vertex is at 2, 3, so without having to graph that, we can plot that point here. We also know that we're opening down because that a value is negative. So when we're asked what is the maximum height, height is on the y-axis, which means height is going to be the y-coordinate of the vertex. We know that's our maximum if we're opening down. So 3, and then make sure you include the appropriate units. And then how long is the ball in the air? Well, how long is going to be if it starts right here and it lands right here on the ground when height is 0? That x-intercept is what you're going to look for. So you can use your calculator, similar to what we did in the previous lesson, to get that value. And then state an appropriate domain and range for this scenario, not for all parabolas with this function, for this particular scenario. So we know on the x-axis we begin when time is zero, and we go until we hit that ground point at 4.4 seconds. So we start by saying t must be greater than or equal to zero, t must be less than or equal to 4.4. So remember, variable in the middle, arrows pointing to the left, and we're including both of those values. This has to be the smallest value. This has to be the largest value. And then height, again, we're going to go from zero on the ground to our maximum height, which is that three. So height is greater than or equal to zero. Height is less than or equal to three. So again, variable in the middle, pointing to the left, smallest number here, largest number on that side. Always draw a sketch and then look, what does each of those axes represent? If you did x for domain and y for range, that's also okay. I just went t because the x-axis represents time and then height because the y-axis represents height.